Hello, hello, John. Hello, Marco. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. All everybody out there in podcast land. I am your host, John Harris. Today on the Rock Metal Podcast, I am being joined by Marco, who's the MPM producer. He's got a new EP called Reborn, which was released earlier this year. And we're going to be chatting about that EP. We're going to chat about a couple of music videos accompanying a couple of booming banger singles, uh, as well as what Marco has been up to this year. So, Marco, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm, uh, I'm ready, uh, you know, for your questions, and I can wait for, for your opinions if you have some uh, beautiful. Okay. Uh, trap door. Looking for opinions. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> nah, don't worry. It's okay. Well, actually, one of my opinions is that the track Reborn and the track Lives on Air are two incredibly different tracks. And so one of my questions was going to be, is that why they were released as singles? Because they show different sides of the EP? Uh, yeah, basically that was, um, yeah, that is probably the, the one cool thing about the EP, but at the same time is, uh, uh, something very hard to understand at the beginning. Basically as, uh, with this new experiment, I wanted to try different size, different sides of my, of my music and I wanted to experiment a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I, I. Basically, what I tried to do uh, is try to make some sort of punk rock 2.0, uh, like uh, mixing modern genres like trap and like, uh, you know, beat music with guitars and riffs. So Reborn probably is uh, that kind of stuff. And on the other hand, maybe uh, Lives on Hair is, uh, I would say, a punk rock song, but with some electronic uh, sounds here and there. So probably the the common thread is um, yeah is is the production. Let's say is a is a, some sort of modern modern punk rock with this kind of uh, common thread. Okay. Now is that why it's called Reborn? Because you're taking punk rock and rebirthing it with some electronic and trap beat elements, or is there something uh, deeper? Actually. And actually, is uh, more connected to the uh, you know to the concept of the song. Uh, I was not in a in a good mood when I wrote the song, but somehow I decided to turn like many many songwriters uh, or aspiring songwriters do, I guess. Uh, so I tried to you know take my <laughs> frustrations out and uh, to to create something, and I I, I basically wanted to. Uh, to make music again, because I've been in a band for 10 years and then I've been in a recording studio studio doing other stuff. And finally, with this uh, uh, with that situation, I wanted to make music again for myself. So that's why Reborn. OK, beautiful. I mean, I guess maybe take us through that. So you mentioned that you weren't in a good mood, but you were able to uh, transcend through the power of music, I guess, into a better mood. Um Take us through that. What happened, if, you're, if you'd be so kind to share, and uh, with the song, um, is it just catharsis, or are you looking to inspire people at the same time? Well, um, to be honest with you, is uh, first thing first when I write music is, uh, is, is 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 therapy for me, you know. So first thing first, don't 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 take it. I mean, don't take it personally, people. <laughs> but first, I do it for me. Okay, I, I I do it because I need it. And in in second, I guess uh, you know that if you listen to that, maybe you can. Uh, uh, I, I would not say learn a lesson, but maybe we can share an experience. Let's say, let's say that. So maybe if I talk about uh, my, my frustration, someone else in the world could could relate to that. And uh, in relation to experience, yeah, basically I was changing a uh, job, I was changing country, country, <laughs> and of course I was changing, you know, friends too. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a different, uh, difficult situation, and probably I'm getting out of uh, getting out of the situation because I'm coming back to Italy, I guess. And um, yeah, so that's how the the song was born. There's so much there that that you you mentioned, not just changing jobs, but changing countries and. Um, you know, the funny thing is being in North America, 
for me, that could easily be going from Canada to the United States. Well, we speak the same language. We essentially yeah. have a close enough accent. We have such a close enough culture that it's almost hard to describe to somebody outside of North America what the differences are. But when we're talking about Europe, you're, you're almost in a whole nother world. So there's that. And then you mentioned uh, changing friends. Um, I guess maybe take us through that experience. And is that something that runs through the EP as um, as a theme throughout the entire EP? Uh, definitely, yeah. The, the funny thing is that um, some friend of mine told me like, hey, Marco, wow, the, I mean, this is this is not you, but at the same, at the same time, it is. Um, I'll explain myself better. I mean, um, I guess I'll describe myself uh, as a happy person, basically. But... Um, you know, when you are inspired in, in, a, in some sort of way, you you, j you you basically want to throw out everything. So yes, this kind of feeling you can uh, you can taste it all over the EP, but uh, in different ways. For example, there is a, there is a song is it called "Anybody Free," uh, which is talking basically about the same thing, but in a funny way. Let's say uh, another one is even more angry. So, yeah, I just tried to, you know, give different messages, but with the same uh, concept. And uh, I was just trying to convince people that I'm not so bad, basically. <laughs> you seem like a good guy to me, but I mean, you know, hey. <laughs> I mean, any, no. any interview that starts off chatting about pasta, pizza, focaccia, ciabatta, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, no. Seriously, it, it, it was because, uh, you know, the, there are a couple of trucks who are mm, definitely uh, very angry. Uh, so, you know, diversity is very important to me. Is uh, uh, what, I, what I don't want to do when I put out some music is that every song sounds uh, the same. I mean, maybe I, I go too far <laughs> on that when I make music because the EP is definitely a punk rock album, but uh, you can find uh, punk pop in there. You can find electronic stuff. You can find different stuff. So this was uh, one of the first uh, experiments, let's say, that I want to, to put out. So uh, we'll see uh, on, on the second or maybe on the new EPs uh, if, if I'll try to, to make more coherent music or um, or if I want to tr I mean I'll still try to be a little bit uh, different when the songs come when the song come out and I'll try to don't exaggerate it's a compromise you know it's uh, it's very difficult to stay in between yeah yeah one of the common themes here that you mentioned is is punk rock and now I guess my question to you Marco is what is punk rock is it the lyrics is it the way the music flows is it a mixture of the two how did you get the punk rock bass and then fill in with like trap beats and other electronic elements and get it to sound cohesive and get it to still sound like something that is identifiably punk rock uh well i guess it's a combination of both uh, first, um, if, if was the, the the question was the, the first one was was that one, uh, but of course you know if we're speaking about punk rock, punk rock has changed so much over the years. So of course we're not speaking about you know being very very offensive or being very very, um, uh, I mean exaggerated. Uh, so uh, I'm basically speaking about anger here. Um, musically speaking, uh, yeah, it was hard. I mean, this, uh, like, NPM producer is basically um, a summary of my my experiences in music. And I've been, as I, as I told you, I've been in a punk rock, in a rock band for 10 years, but then I studied uh, sound engineering. So at some point, when I, when I was uh, beginning this Reborn EP, I was looking at myself at the mirror and I was thinking, mm, am I, I mean, I'm, not, I'm beyond 30. I don't think I can be a trapper anymore. <laughs> and I don't want to because I love trap, but of course I don't want to be, you know, uh, a, a new, I cannot be like that. You know, I, I, I want to be something, I, I want to try to be something unique. So 
uh, I was thinking that maybe that maybe the the best way for me was just to summarizing the stuff I've been doing for for the last ten years. And uh, so speaking about mixes, yeah, it's it's kind of hard. Uh, I don't want to get very technical, but basically the idea sometimes is just to to make like verses with beats and suddenly change it with guitars and double the rhythm with uh, you know real drums and. I mean, to me, it is sound. It is very interesting, but of course, it's <laughs> it takes a lot of work to to make it sound cohesive. I imagine that it, it does. Now, lives on air. What is this track about? Yeah, uh, that song is about social networks. Um, I definitely hate social network but let me explain <laughs> of course uh, like like uh, like always like every time it happens um you know human humanity creates some stuff which is very very good which is uh pure genius and then is the humanity that turns against uh, makes a good uh, very bad usage of that um I think social networks can be very cool, but um, if you basically are, um, you know, if you spend too much time on that, it becomes to uh, destroy your brain. Uh, as I mean, I write songs ninety uh, percent of the time when I when I have some kind of strange experience, and uh, I guess that everyone can relate. You know, you go you're going out with some company with some friends, and then you're like five, and then four on five is you're on the table eating your pizza or pasta or whatever, but uh, four on five are basically watching the, the phone. And after, you know, uh, half an hour, you're like, guys, I'm in. <laughs> what are we doing here? I don't think, uh, I don't think we're definitely communicating. Um, so I decided to, to write a song about that. And that is not just that. I mean, there are so many different matters we can speak about. Uh, you know, the... the the will uh, of people to 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 look for fame, even though if you don't have nothing to offer to to an audience, and, and that is you know very crazy to me because of course re creatives people um, are are uh, I mean people who is not creative are getting more likes and uh, visibility on who is really is. Uh, sorry, I guess I, I I don't think you get you got my I think you got my point even uh, even if my explanation was not very very easy, but uh, that's very crazy to me. That's uh, I don't really understand why ninety percent of the people is looking for fame and and um, I, I just wanted to talk about it. <laughs> Well, I mean, the funny thing, Marco, is there's so many things there that you just mentioned, uh, and we'll we'll touch ba uh, back on them. Um, you know, almost being uh, afraid to say that I don't like social networks. I don't either. I'm not on Facebook. I wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole. Uh, it's it's a disgusting place. I don't. I'm not on Instagram either. <laughs> I call it dis distract book and distractagram uh, because uh, okay, they, they have turned into. Uh, part of the machine that enables the people to be distracted uh, yeah. so, so that they can be further used. And the funny thing is a lot of people are worried about, uh, you know, being watched. Oh, the government's watching or that or this industry is watching. Nobody's watching you. They're using you. And yeah, the the maybe the social network started out uh, innocent, but after they got big and had influence and we're seeing this in a great deal now uh distract book distractagram they're turning into a distraction engine to keep people not informed as much as they think they are but distracted and then used um so i wouldn't go near with a 10-foot pole and i don't see those platforms lasting probably another couple of years because uh they have not handled the situation yeah. very well um yeah yeah well, at the same time, I don't want to sound like like a grandpa, you know. Basically, is uh, it, it can be very cool to me. Just mm, people just don't don't has, exaggerate on that. I mean, uh, if you look at probably you you saw it. If you saw some documentary like uh, the Social Dilemma, maybe on Netflix, you definitely realize uh, that, that this thing is basically went out of control. 
And now instead of make people socialize, is doing sometimes it's actually doing the opposite, like like you were saying. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a dangerous place. Totally, baby, totally. Um, yeah. And then something else that you had mentioned was, and I I, I found this one to be really quite uh, an interesting thing to 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 take a tangent on was, you know, I'm too old to be a trap artist. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, that's sort of an interesting thing. I think anybody listening in right now who's still listening in, if you're listening in, you probably agreed with what I said about social media. Um, if you're not listening in, it's probably because you hated what I said about social media. And you're like, no, uh, as you go back to check your social media instead of engaging in the people that are actually around you um, at a two meter distance, please, with a mask on. Uh, yeah. You know, but how many of us in bands have thought, man, it'd be really nice to pick that guitar back up or those drums back up or whatever. Uh, but man, I'm 25 now. I'm 35 now. I'm 45 now. I'm 55 now. Uh, yeah. I don't think I don't think it really matters what age uh, you are. It's always going to feel like you're too old. Like I don't know, the magic window was supposed to happen when you were 17 and a half. <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, the, the thing is that um, speaking about that is it, is because I I, I I like trap. You know, I like trap. Uh, but of course, it's some kind of. Uh, you know that most of the time they're speaking about uh you know uh watches uh luxury and and whatever and of course i i just want to be uh, very honest with myself i i'm not like that i'm not that kind of person that uh brag around about how many how, how much money i got because I, I i don't have money but that's another story um but basically i i wanted to to make something true so i was taking the inspiration from the from the beats maybe from the 808 from the uh, huge basses but uh, you know i don't want to be that's why i was telling you that i i, I don't think i uh, can be a trapper <laughs> <laughs> beautiful okay uh now i guess my only other question would be this year i imagine you released the ep you had a lot of plans as far as uh i'm sure promoting the record in the traditional ways uh playing shows and, and touring and whatnot um how has the covid situation affected your year did you turn it into a blessing or was it something that really kind of uh screwed things up uh, you know, actually, this is a funny question because, of course, this was totally unexpected. And uh, at the beginning, I was like, oh, man, don't tell him. Uh, what, what, what should I do? Should I uh, release the, the, I mean, the album one year later? Should I do something like that? But in the end, it was a, a I mean, uh, speaking respectfully but to me it was kind of a blessing because uh of course this this is the first ep so i was not planning any tour at the beginning i i, I just wanted to study the situation so i i took advantage of this whole moment because i was um you know i was for low with my company so I, I i took advantage of the situation to you know make some take some courses on the internet about music marketing making music and all the stuff so uh, it was very cool to me. Of course, uh, uh, it would have been better if I was able to um, to study the situation around and, you know, looking for the first gigs, especially because I was in UK. But, you know, I, I, I do a lot of things, musically speaking. I also do music for other artists. So uh, I, think I'm, I think this, you know, this was definitely a blessing to me because I can uh, uh, think about all the things that I want to do. And um, um, so, yeah, I guess I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Now, I don't believe that I have any other questions. So unless there was something that you wanted to uh, chat about, because we chatted about a couple of the tracks off of the EP, Reborn, Lives on Air. Uh, the music videos for those are available on today's show notes at www.therockrollpodcast.ca. Uh, as well as the link to your website, mpmproducer.com. Uh, chatted about uh, what went into creating the EP, uh, how this year has gone for you. Um, so unless there's anything that I missed, I just wanted to thank you for coming on to the Punk Rock Trap podcast today. <laughs> you should name the show like this. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> that could be, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I'll forgive you if you do if you don't do that after my interview. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll every 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 episode will start with Fakasha. Uh, for ca- yeah. for actually, actually, I have one question because I'm curious. If you don't, if you don't, I mean, you're. If somebody told you, like, uh, hey, listen, there's a uh, there's a guy who is making punk trap rap music. Would you be? Would you be? And if you don't know me, like, would it be interested in listening to it? In listening to it, or you would say something like, mm, I guess I'll skip. Of course, I would be interested in listening to it, but my immediate thought would be like watching a train wreck. Hey, there was a train wreck down the street. You want to go take a look at it? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Do I want to take a look at it? But the thing is, is that you did such a really good job of it that it was uh, it was good to hear. So I think you're definitely uh, smashing together a couple of genres that we don't necessarily expect to be smashed together. But you did a good job of it. And I think that if you continue to do that, you'll end up getting so good at it that you'll come out with something that will make you famous and you won't even need to have saved your vacation photos to post on Instagram six months later to do it. (laughs) Thank you so much. Well, uh, hopefully we'll see. We'll see. Uh, We'll see. Beautiful. All right, my good man, I will go ahead and stop recording.